very excited for two reasons. The first reason is that we have a big star, no? Sa atin, uh, diba kasama natin. Star? Kasama, kasama, <laughs> ma'am, kasama natin si Secretary Briones, mga kapatid, no? Dito sa Isip Isap. Um, pero pangalawa, excited din ako kasi I think this is one of the rare instances where we could talk about Um, education, pero through the eyes of our faith. Di ba, bihira yan eh. Sa social media, laging ina-attack ang death and right, sa, sa, sa traditional media, parang laging kaaway ang, ang sistema. Now, we'll take a step back. Of, apart from talking about these issues, ano yung magagawa natin sa ating, uh, sa ating mga kapatiran, no? sa ating mundo bilang mga Kristiyano dito sa ating bansa? Diyan iikot yung ating mga pag-uusapan ngayon. So brothers and sisters, hang in there. It's going to be an exciting one hour. Exciting episode. Ang one hour episode. lang? One hour lang! Gusto <laughs> 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 one day. One hour lang! Sagulat ako na. Para tingnan mo kum- kumakamot na ng ulo si si Melba. <laughs> Sige na nga. Ate Melba, ano na ba si natin si Secretary? Yes. <laughs> Oo. Baka kasama na natin si Secretary Bionis. Kasama na natin siya pero mas mapag-uusapan pa natin yung ating mga paksa at isyu na gustong himay-himayin para maintindihan natin yung katotohanan sa isyu na yan, di ba? Yung mga isyu na yan, hindi ba Kuya Jail? Panoorin po muna natin itong Pulso ng Bayan. We want to in- invite our uh, viewers and of course our dear Secretary Bionis to uh, hear out itong mga uh, pulso ng mga kabataan natin. Sa totoo lang po, nahihirapan po kung mag-adjust dahil sa madaming pagbabago dahil sa pandemya, lalo na sa aming pag-aaral. Una po, napakahirap kasi napaka-comfortable dahil nasa bahay ka lang, hindi ka kaya nang nasa school. And mahirap ka, ma- mahirap po makapag-focus lalo na sa pag-aaral dahil madaming distraction dahil andyan ng gawain, bahay, pati higaan mo. So, ngayon po, I'm still adjusting sa mga pagbabago ngayon, lalo na po sa aking pag-aaral. For this month, I would say it would be stable, but for some days, it would be up, there would be ups and downs because for the internet connections, there are many sorts of problems, internet connections, electricities, and sometimes the teachers doesn't have time to teach so they pass it to an to the officers and share share the lesson problem po as a student yung po online class is yung unstable na connection internet connection before kasi minsan may mga times na nawawalan ng Wi-Fi, ganun. So, ang nangyayari is, pinapanood ko na lang yung mga recorded video nung class na hindi ko na-attenan. Nung una, medyo okay pa sa akin yung modular class kasi may gamit naman ako, like computer. Pero so far, di na ako masyado nakakasabay sa mga activities at quizzes na pinapagawa ng mga teacher. May ramon pa ako sa online class kasi wala pa ako Okay, gets ko. Wala nang sound, Belba. Opo. Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Uh, welcome po sa ating isip-isak, Conversations on Faith and Society. Ngayong gabi po, uh, pinaunlakan po tayo ng ating Secretary of Education, si Ate Liling Briones. Uh, hindi na po siguro lingit sa atin na siya po ay isang educator for a very long time. Siya po ay Professor Emeritus sa National College of Public Administration and Governance sa UP. Uh, siya rin po ay naging Board of, uh, Reg- no, Board of Trustees na, na chair ng Silliman University. 
doon po siya nag-graduate at uh, malapit sa kanyang puso ang siliman sapagkat doon daw po siya nahubog bilang isang estudyante at isang kristyano. At uh, ang, ang maganda po ngayon ay uh, si Ate Liling is talagang kapatid po natin sa Panginoon. And ang isang sidelight po sa kanya na gustong gusto ko, eh mahilig siya sa music, mahilig siyang kumanta. <laughs> Uh, siya po ay matagal na member ng Manila Concert Choir. So, at marami rin po siyang mga yung mga mga naringid natin po ngayon sa mga panahon ito. Sa totoo lang, marami na pong sakripisyo si Ate Liling bilang isang aktivista nung siya po ay estudyante at bata-bata pa. At uh, siya po rin ang nag-umpisa nung Freedom from Death Coalition. So, marami po siyang mga uh, social Uh, and civic ng mga concerns na siguro magandang backdrop para sa kanya. Ngayon po na siya ay nakaupo sa isang hot seat ng Department of Education. At maririnig po natin mula sa kanyang perspective, mula sa kanyang lenses, no? Bilang isang Kristiyano who is, is striving to do something good within our governments. So maganda po na marinig natin po siya sa gabi ng ito. Uh, so Mar- si Maria at si Jair will uh, help our conversation sa kanya. Ayan. KJ. All right, Secretary Briones, maraming maraming salamat po no. Kumpisahin natin ngayon para um uh, siguro bago natin pag-usapan yung education sector. Kumustahin muna namin kayo. Yes. How what is it what is it like to be a Christian in in this government? As all of us know, whether you are in government out of government or wherever you are it's always difficult to be a christian at this time christianity has never been a bed of roses we know all about the cross we know all about uh, living uh, in in a very uh, worldly uh, situation Mm-hmm. And Christianity started uh, with a strong and heavy hand of uh, Roman imperialism. So right from the beginning, uh, wala naman tayong illusions as Christians that uh, magiging mayaman tayo, magiging uh, wow. beauty tayo, or magiging famous tayo because alam natin what we, were, what we are going uh, into and what we are looking forward to. Uh, mm-hmm. Those who who think of Christianity in terms of prosperity, in terms of wealth, that is how they look at it. But for me, uh, being in government, particularly a Christian in government, I have always taught Melba, my students in public administration, uh, those who go to governance or public administration to to become executives. I always tell them to be in government is to suffer. And that is uh, in uh, in my biography, yeah. and it's the same for Christianity. To be a Christian is to suffer and be prepared to suffer and to accept suffering because ano bang sabi? We are not of this world, oh. and we are looking forward to another better world. So no illusions about. Uh, the glories and the wealth and the famousness mm-hmm. of, of being a, a Christian and the glamour of Christianity. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't uh, buy that. Well, neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, those are wise, powerful words, Secretary. Tribulations, ano? parang yun yung key word, ano? tribulations. What do you think is the most difficult tribulation that you have been going through or faced with these past years as secretary? Ano ba? It's, is it fake well, news? Uh, is it the lies? Is it the character assassination? Ano is, uh, of course, the lies are there. Hmm. Uh, Jail, if you are 80 years old and you are called a whore, <laughs> okay. it's not the most... Uh, No, it's not. Exciting thing. And if you are uh, 80 years old and, you're, and you take Christianity seriously and you are told yeah. to go to hell several times, that's, it. Uh, that's not the nicest thing. But no one reacts. They enjoy passing all this. 
Yeah. And you probably have noticed that during the past uh, 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 weeks, uh, I have not been um, making myself available to media because whatever yes. you say, they will pick out one uh -huh. sentence. They make a meme out of it and then uh, they get your ugliest picture and then they take it out of context and everybody is amused. They pass it around and everybody believes them. <laughs> And no one at all is shocked. We are very angry at curses. We are very angry at language. But what kind of language are we throwing at, uh, at people probably uh, who cannot fight back? Because uh, as a child growing up, uh, it was a no-no for us, Melba, to curse. No, no, talaga. So we cannot fight back and answer in the same language that is being used by those who attack me personally. And that must be a difficult Never thing to do. Like them. And that is a source, of course, of frustration. Because, as, of course, I want to give tit for tat if, if only uh, I could go beyond what I am taught, no? So uh, that, that's, that's one difficulty. And, and the lies, because we are Department of Education, Melba, ang anong bang motto ni Department of Education? Honesty is the best policy. Yeah. The Bible naman, seek you the truth, the truth shall make you free. So you have yeah. to be honest. Magsabihin natin na nagbumaba yung enrollment ng private schools ng 50% for a while. Ngayon, 25% na lang or the mm -hmm. alternative learning system, we say that it is 50%. The hell, uh, that's what our, our, our numbers say. So we, we, to be able to tell the truth at this time, while the other side is uh, manufacturing lies all the time, hindi mo sila mapalabanan in their language, in their right. style of work, in their cruelty, their viciousness, and their maliciousness. And uh, of course, the most painful, the even more painful, mm. of course, is that it is accepted. It is a source of humor. Mm. Uh, it is, is, uh, and it is passed around and, and, and uh, is uh, enjoyed uh, in our kind of culture. Cruelty is part of uh, the the popular way of, of conversing. So how do you uh, uh, deal with, with this? Of course, plus the other things, Pajayel, about education. And right. Elba, of course, is uh, very uh, familiar uh, uh, with this because we have many challenges right now in education. I said nga ng aking predecessor because... Uh, we, we, we sometimes laugh and say, ano ba, is education in crisis or not? And uh, sagot niya minsan, the last time we talked, sabi nga niya, no, uh, we are chronically ill for all these years, all these decades. Education has been chronically ill. Chronically, chronically ill. Sick. It has, these problems, these challenges wow. have been there uh, all the time. And whoever is sitting uh, in the position, of course, gets the, the big bats. Exactly. I leave, oh. I finish my term. For example, jail, I'll be yes, on the other side. I'll be critiquing, then I'll be heroine. But right now, I, of course, I am the villain because I am uh, in the what uh, Melba describes as the, the hot seat. And th that's not an easy thing to, 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 to put up with. Yeah. And this is where uh, Melba and, and Mary and, and Jail, where, where, where age is, uh, is a, uh, an advantage because you know that sooner or later this will, this will end. You know that this will be over. You know that this has been done before to, wow. to, to others. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, you look forward to the time for your day of liberation. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just about a little over a year. A little oh, over a year. No, diba? yeah. That's right. That's honest, I think may liberation din naman na pwedeng mangyari sa mga viewers natin ngayon. Let's not uh, rely lang no, on the social uh, media information that we have. Ito, meron akong ano, research. Pero, 
the information <laughs> about our guest tonight. Uh, this book, Faith, Duty, and uh, Country, no? uh, this is about the multi-layered passions of uh, Leonor Magtolis Brione. So, sa mga kasama namin, firstly, Dr. Brione, uh, uh, Secretary Brione, nagpapasalamat kami lahat dito sa Isip Ita for giving us time. You're right. I am an avid news viewer at uh, sabi ko, parang tahimik ang kaibigan ng aking boss na si Dr. Melba Magay. Kaya sabi ko, nung pinaunlakan ninyo kami, napakalaking honor ito sa amin. Right. So, we wanna really uh, express and say in this conversation, na kami ni Kuya Jail, we were just chatting back and forth. Hats off po kami sa inyo. It must yeah. be very difficult to be in your place. And that's why, ngayong uh, gabing ito, we want to Uh, hear you out, maybe correcting. Kahit siguro pagod na kayo, Dr. Briones. Hindi. Um, de- <laughs> ay, okay, kung hindi pa pagod. <laughs> I, had, I had several Ma- meetings since ma'am, this morning. Oh, ma'am, just before we carry on with our conversation, bumabati sa inyo via Facebook Live si uh, Rene, Pastor Rene Futalan, your former student at College of Public Ad in Public Finance. Ah, uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, 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 Marami po sila nang nanonood ngayon and, uh, and we are encouraging me. brothers and sisters, put in your questions there. We're gonna be sharing the questions with Secretary Breones as we move uh, along. Sure. Secretary, our first question is this. How would you assess the state of education sa gitna ng pandemya ito? Sabi niyo, chronically uh, ill eh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't mind, I um, I will give, uh, I, I'll try to be as brief as, as possible. Hmm. Pero I, I'll give you some basic uh, information about uh, education at this time. So makikishare lang ako. I'll do it very, very uh, uh, as quickly as I, I can. So you get a, a, a snapshot of uh, what okay. is this education good. at this time. Uh, tatlong periods ito na sinasabi ko, education in the time of COVID. Before COVID, uh, we were already uh, initiating what we call uh, a pivot in education. Kasi in the past three years, uh, we were able to reach more students, 27 million learners, how many schools, how many school teachers, and so on. Pero we thought that we should follow the mandate of the Constitution, which is quality education. Hindi lang yung... Uh, we enroll every child, mag-increase ang enrollment namin. But sabi ng Constitution, every Filipino child is entitled to quality education. So before COVID pa, nag, ano na kami, nag-decide na kami to shift to quality. Dahil nakuha na namin yung uh, increase in numbers which we wanted. Kasi nag-increase na participation rate, da 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 da, da ang daming numbers niyan. Uh, ngayon, uh, right now, we have uh, more than 61,000 schools, uh, 47,000 ang uh, public, uh, dominant talaga, and then you have the uh, state universities and colleges which also have basic education, local government units, uh, 14,562 uh, private schools, and then you have 20 schools overseas. So we have 61,916 uh, schools to oversee. Inaano namin yan. Tinitingnan namin sila and then may breakdown, which I will, uh, of course, share with you. Pero dominant talaga ang public schools, 47,000 public schools. Okay. Now, uh, so para sa amin, uh, before COVID pa, na quality is the pinakalingering yung kung sa sabi namin chronic challenge of basic education. Everyone is critical, hindi marunong mag-English, mababa sa math at saka sa science, uh, ang dami-dami, hindi makahanap ng trabaho, uh, etc. Uh, hindi na susolve ang poverty. Uh, kung maraming uh, expectations. So sabi namin, uh, kailangan, we have to pivot towards quality. So not, now, um, so we, we uh, developed what we called sulong edukalidad. Edukalidad means quality education. This was pre-COVID, or just before uh, COVID. Okay, next. Now, uh, unang ano namin, this is of interest to, to Melba, of course, Uh, we, we coined the word KITE, K-I-T-E. So ang unang concern namin is uh, uh, yung K-12 curriculum. And, and, and uh, I was thinking that um, 
Melba and her fellow uh, historians and teachers can can contribute to this kasi four years na itong sinabi ko sa DepEd na kailangan baguhin yung ating curriculum. Pero nung dumating ang COVID, lalong napabilis yung pag ano natin ng challenge ng pagbago ng curriculum. Kasi nagiging uh, uh, us, with senior high school, uh, yung STEM natin, yung science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, I have always insisted na kailangan sabayan i-balance sa humanities, sa social sciences, at saka sa values. This is a very, very big debate. Alam ni Melba ito sa UP, sigawan, walk out, and so on, kung how many units in, in STEM, how many units in the humanities for college students, how much more sa level ng uh, um, basic education. So una yun sa, uh, sa kite K, the, tw- the curriculum, and we are still at it after four years we are still battling it and uh, uh, you can make your contributions uh, along this line uh, sunod sunod is uh, improving the learning environment ang facilities natin uh, nakikita natin uh, especially now uh, with with covid um, iba na yung expectations natin kung anong itsura ng learning environment natin maybe we don't have so we don't need so many school buildings maybe we need more digital tools maybe we need more connectivity uh, and and so on and where uh, our learners are able to share their thoughts in whatever way they can okay next so that's the i part the t part uh, sabi nga nila dapat ito ang number one. and melba and i are both teachers and we know that much depends on our teachers. Kanina yung isang bata nagsabi na uh, pinapasa sa kanyang experience, pinapasa ng teachers sa kanilang mga uh, student leaders, etc. Ang trabaho ng teachers o sa parents, yung, yung ganon. Eh, uh, hindi ko malimot-limutan yung isang bago kong natutunan from... Uh, uh, from one of our greatest uh, scientists no mathematics is Stephen Hawking na, uh, who passed on at more than 70 years old and sabi nga niya wherever you have an outstanding student you can be sure there is an outstanding teacher kung may excellent na student mayroong excellent na teacher who is responsible so dito nakaikot ang ating uh, ating uh, uh, interest at this time now uh, alam naman natin ang sistema natin try uh, tinatawag na lang try focal yung sistema natin sa edukasyon our our teachers are taught they are mentored by the universities which is under ched another uh, institution and then they come to us by the time they come to us nakatapos na sila ng edukasyon and sa amin is already post ano na um, uh, in service training na pero yung pre service is done by the universities so uh, kailangan tingnan natin yan because yung battle for quality education yung sinasabi namin is going and is being fought and won inside the classrooms by our teachers Kaya nga yung point ninyo kanina ng iba na kailangan patuloy yung pag ano papunta ng mga bata sa classrooms that's a very uh, uh, relevant uh, point no so teachers upskilling ang pang-apat sa kahit namin and this is where uh, you come in this is where the Christians come in we have to engage the stakeholders Hindi lang naman na ang edukasyon ay basic education responsibility ng ng ano Department of Education uh, it is uh, a societal responsibility and we have to engage the stakeholders you have 100 million Filipinos you have 100 million experts on education you talk about business or or space or space travel or spaceships you have only a few. Pag sabihin mo education, everybody knows what is happening, what should be done about education. So ang nakita namin na we have to engage uh, our stakeholders and we are, we are already doing this. We have an education forum with about 200 uh, organizations participating uh, from business, uh, lahat-lahat na academic institutions, and they tell us what is happening and what probably needs uh, further uh, improvement and uh, we are agreed on uh, as i said the curriculum 
uh, the kind of equipment the environment that we have for learning and teaching like our school buildings have to be re-examined uh, pangalawa yung teachers talaga sabi nga ng iba bakit number three ang teacher sabi namin eh uh, uh, actually number one talaga ang teacher and then uh, then you have the uh, um, engaging of our, our stakeholders, which includes uh, Christian groups. And there are Christian groups who are already active uh, and, and giving us uh, feedback and helping us out. So next. Now, ngayon, it's now the time of COVID. That was just before COVID. And we were already launching my Kanta na kami Melba. And, <laughs> and we were starting all this uh, Idukalidad. Uh, uh, and then, uh, in the light of, of in the light of the I uh, know of the <clears throat> of the examinations, the international assessments, so uh, sa PISA, so taman tama yung edukalidad na magfocus kami na abota ng ano ng pandemya. So what is it like now uh, with in the time of COVID nineteen? The first decision that we made nung nagdecide. Uh, na i lockdown ang buong bansa at that time you have, we had a national lockdown i was in abra at that time uh, ang unang decision namin is that we have to continue education hindi namin ititigil we had a very long inabot kami ng ano madaling araw na kadebate sa uh, fellow policy makers ko and our fellow politicians kung ipagpatuloy ba sarhan ba o hindi ang, ang ano ang schools and I was uh, by my lonely self uh, advocating that dapat hindi sarhan ang schools. This was in March last year. Kasi palapit nang magsara ang semester and we were already finishing. So uh, ang ginawa namin, uh, dahil uh, ang desisyon ay talagang everybody uh, kailangan i-close yung mga schools, uh, including local governments were for it, ang nag-decide kaming gumawa ng tinatawag namin basic education learning continuity plan na maski na nag-lockdown, maski na mayroong quarantine, maski na may COVID, we will proceed. But of course, we were not under the illusion that it will be exactly the same as before. All the features of education before COVID because COVID is there and we had this lockdown and the schools were closed. So, inisip namin kung paano makapatuloy ng edukasyon even as the schools are closed. And for six to seven months, the teachers were not teaching at all. For six to seven months, the children were not going to school at all. Kasi pinospone hanggang nagbukas tayo ng school in October and we never stopped uh, 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 working at it no na kailangan i continue ang ano namin eh, education must continue yung nangyari sa Marawi we continued education nagkalindol sa kung saan saan sa Batangas o sa Cotabato o sa Sambales patuloy ang pag-aaral linilipat lang ang mga estudyante because the minute you stop uh, education then uh, you stop a, a child's uh, growth. You try stopping uh, a child from going to school for six months. And part of the difficulties of our children and our teachers, and I, I believe this, is because for nearly six months, walang klase, walang teacher, lockdown. And we only went back to school October. So the transition was difficult for the children, for the teachers, and also for us administrators, we knew that we were uh, implementing an incomplete system, but we felt that an incomplete system without face-to-face, kasi pumayag lang ang presidente, basta walang face-to-face, would be uh, more helpful than nothing at all. Kasi yung iba gusto nila, academic freeze. One year, two years na walang klase ang mga bata. A child who is 10 years old becomes 12 years old. Saka mo pabalikin sa eskwelahan. Uh, you, you cannot imagine, and those of us who are in the teaching profession uh, would have nightmares thinking of uh, what the impact would be on a child that two years hindi pumapasok. 
So, ayun, uh, we had the support of Congress at that time kasi may mga bills na file na ang, ang proposal, sinuport yung ano namin, continuity plan, was the blended learning. Isang, isang uh, professor ang nag-sponsor nito sa House and then there were those also in the Senate. Tapos, ang ano namin, ang, ang, ang sabi namin, we're going to have blended learning but without face-to-face. And of course, that is a major uh, uh, difficulty to, to deal with. So we had a challenge right from the beginning. But for me and for us, it's better to find alternatives to the lack of face-to-face rather than close the schools. Because when the schools are closed, and you know there are many rival, uh, many rival and competing uh, 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 theories about schooling and learning and education, who will take over? Who will educate our children? So, nagbago ang role ng DepEd, nagbago ang role ng teacher, ang parents lahat, and we only had six months to work on it. Bear in mind, it was very, very tight. We were working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I was meeting virtually with my regional directors, my, uh, my officials, practically on a daily basis. Because nagahabol kami, kasi the earlier we open, the better for us. And so finally, the, the president agreed na mag-open kami in October. That's why I said na it was a victory. The others laughed. Why did I say that it was a victory to open schools? Just to open schools when many were saying there should be no school, I think is a victory in itself. Just to introduce an approach which may not include face-to-face. Kaya naisipan namin and sabi nga ng mga bata, uh, valid naman yung sinabi nila, your problems with connectivity. Kaya nag-develop kami ng television programs, nag-develop kami ng, ng radio, at saka if you go to the mountain provinces, uh, you would have uh, children connecting with their teacher via two-way radio. Uh, kinakausap nila, naglalakad sila, kausap yung teacher nila. And one, uh, one multilateral institution sponsored the the purchase of, of two-way uh, radios in remote places. So it's not only tayo dito sa Manila, we think of connectivity and we think of computers. By the way, when we decided on, on, on blended learning and uh, the use of computers, tiningnan namin ang numbers, uh, we realized that uh, there are more cell phones Many of them, smart cell phones, JL, believe it or not, than humans in the Philippines. You have 100 million Filipinos, you have 159 million uh, cell phones, and also tablets, etc., etc. It's not that these are not available, it is that they are not, we are not used to utilizing these tools for education. And then we have this problem of connectivity, which the children kanina were, were pointing out uh, to us. So anyway, right from the beginning, alam namin na may kulang. And we said that, wala naman kaming tinatago. Sabi namin, blended ito, pero walang face-to-face. Everything else is there. Uh, yung connectivity, yung platform, yung depth and commons, which you are... Uh, ilang milyon na ang gumagamit ng DepEd Commons uh, 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 namin and televisions because local governments have television stations, television programs. We trained our teachers to, to lecture. Sabi namin na uh, uh, teacher broadcaster. Um, uh, they were trained by, by very well-known uh, practitioners in the profession. No? Uh, Kasi iba yung magtuturo ka sa mga bata na nakikita mo yung mukha na inaantok o naboboard kaysa yung you're just looking at a screen. No? So dali-dali yan lahat. That was really done uh, as, as quickly as, as possible. So next. And then, so ayun yung four pillars natin. Now, what is the situation um, at present uh, in terms of enrollment? Uh, 
uh, ang latest enrollment numbers natin, as you can see, kasi everybody is complaining, why is it that there is a drop in enrollment, da, 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 da. And then, makita natin, as of February 5, kasi we extended enrollment, uh, we already have 26.6 million uh, learners. And, and uh, uh, that is something considering that we started with a few thousand. And that's 96% of last year's enrollment with last year without COVID, 96% with COVID. And public only, yun ang malaki, 99%. And we have schools na overbooked sila. What was happening is that uh, students, learners from the private sector nag-migrate along with teachers, they nag-migrate sa public sector. And what is the because? Bakit bumaba ang level ng enrollment sa public sector schooling? Makita natin sa private na 78% lang ng uh, ano ang nakuha nating enrollment sa private sector. There was a time na 50% or even less than 50% ang nag-enroll sa private schools. And this is not so much because of DepEd, but because of the economic situation. Nag-negative GDP tayo, and you had hundreds and thousands of OFWs who went home and who usually send their children to private schools who have lost their jobs. Many people lost their jobs, and so how can they uh, sustain their children in the private schools? And of course, that breaks my heart because I believe that there has to be, and Constitution also says that, complementarity between public and private education. I am a product of both public and private education, and I don't regret it. I benefited from it. Ang isa sa talagang medyo masakit din is our alternative learning system. And again, Christian groups are very active in this. Many Christian groups have their own uh, alternative schools. Eh, ano, ang, ang enrollment compared to last year is only 54%. Why? Because itong alternative learning systems natin, ang nag enroll karamihan, mga people who work, children who work, adults who work at night or on weekends. And when they lose their jobs, wala na. They, they, can, they, they forget about going to school. So itong alternative learning system and private schools, yun ang natamaan sa enrollment. And this is related to the economy. Kasi nag-negative growth na tayo, probably uh, the numbers will, will come out and you will see for yourself to, uh, ang growth na GDP, unemployment, incomes, cost of living, and, and even more terrifying is uh, you know, uh, the situation of hunger. Kasi if people don't have jobs, then how can they buy food? How can they survive, much less send their children to to a private school. At saka ang natatamaan dito, hindi naman yung mga big time ng mga private schools because their alumni take care of them. And I've always said that uh, they take care of themselves. Ang natatamaan are the small schools which are named after Bible characters, faith, academy, or, or, or uh, whatever, Catholic, uh, Evangelical, Protestant, Adventist, Muslims, yun ang natatamaan yung mga maliliit na elementary schools. This year pa lang ay more than 800 ang hindi makaproceed ng mga private schools because of the impact of the economy. So uh, yun ang gusto nating uh, uh, emphasize. Now, uh, on the matter of the the face to face which we said na face to face we uh, we proposed to the president that uh, we should we we can uh, um, implement limited face to face kasi nagbukas tayo ng october nakita na natin talaga na uh, face to face is very important whether we do it full time five times a week or maybe a few hours a day the child has to meet other children the child has to meet the teacher. The child has to, to uh, feel the, the environment of, of a school. At ang karamihang naghahanap ng face to face are the children themselves because they look for fellow children. 
And I received a letter from one child, a grade school child, Nasabe. He does not want to be taught by his mother. He wants to be taught by a teacher, whatever his reason is. So, mga bata ang uh, maraming naghihingi nitong face-to-face. Uh, 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 -face. And of course, the parents also, because they have to spend time to, uh, to oversee their children's education. And it also reduces uh, their time for, for working. No? So, uh, ano ang situation ngayon on the matter of face-to-face? -face? Pumayag na si Presidente, unanimous decision ng cabinet, now we will pilot it and we already identified over a thousand schools kung saan namin uh, implement ang face to face then uh, uk variant came in but now nakikita natin we have been observing uk variant nakikita natin na mamamanage naman natin itong itong bagong variant na ito and uh, we can give the the, the pilot uh, face to face uh, another try and so uh, this is what uh, uh, this is what we are already considering and going to present to the president for his decision. And by the way, uh, JL and, and Melba, a law was passed uh, last year by the Senate and the House, giving the president the power to decide as to when to open schools on the advice of the Secretary of Education. So sa kanya yung decision. And so we're already. Uh, in the meantime na uh, kinansel niya itong pilot, uh, we are studying further na pag ma-implement na, uh, we will be ready. Identify na yung schools, ang conditionalities, what we are looking for, etc., etc., uh, so that uh, we can uh, make a go. So that is the, the situation uh, right now. Um, I'm sorry uh, I, I had to go through the three periods, but uh, I believe, especially after listening to the children, uh, it is important for us parents and society to uh, perhaps have an idea of what, what constitutes uh, the challenges that we are facing in education. Uh, it's not the easiest, of course, and, uh, but that is not... Uh, an issue whether you are faced with something that is easy or something that is difficult. I mean, it is there. Thank you. Maraming salamat po, uh, Secretary Briones. Sabi namin ni Kuya Jail, it's a very comprehensive and um, honest na sharing sa uh, yeah. state ng ating um, edukasyon ngayon. So one of the things that I really picked up from your um, presentation is that yung quality ng ating edukasyon. Yes, is quality. A good, a good, Even um, before COVID. Uh, oh, yes, and you created, you created a catchy uh, uh, brand for it, Edukalidad. It's going to stay yeah. in the mind of the people. And one of the most important things, Paul, that you said is that um, this fight for quality education begins in the classroom. At ngayon yes. na wala na nga itong classroom yes. space natin where this growing and learning can happen, nangyayari na ito ngayon sa virtual space. And there, and I must, you know, balance that there are really good teachers. Diba, Kuya Jayil? Talagang magsayaw, gumawa ng mga mm -hmm. kung ano-ano just to both entertain and edutain and educate their uh, their students and we really appreciate you sa inyong mga guru who are possibly watching this show salamat sa inyong uh, hard work but you said that <laughs> you know how i taught public finance oh uh, I, we use i use the movie before so uh, all uh, earlier students i use this story of robin hood kasi public finance is taxes <laughs> and then later, ah, balo, mabas na si, ano, si Lord of the Rings. Si Lord of the Rings na yung ano namin, ah, nagiging umiikot doon yung mga tax collection, history, British, and so on. And then later on, ah, lumabas si, ano ba to? The Game of Thrones. Uh, or they discuss namin every week lahat nanonood ng Game of Thrones. And then hahanapin namin yung public finance aspects. Uh, oh, saan po pasok doon at saka yung mga character sa history. Of course, it was very exciting. Oh, yeah, pero yeah, namatay, yeah, yung, yeah. namatay yung bida 
Ay, ayaw ko nang manood kasi namatay ang beda. There is. <laughs> And then later on, si ano ba yung pangalan si John Snow? John Snow. John Snow. John Snow. Oo. Ayaw ko nang mag-discan. And then later, oh, sabi ng estudyante ko, Ma'am, nabuhay na si John Snow. Oh, balik na naman. <laughs> Game of Thrones. Balik na naman sa taxation, sa imperialism, ganon-ganon. Pero, uh, well, th- th- that's... how innovative some teachers can be. Yes. Alam mo, well, by high school teacher in Siliman, to illustrate the law of gravity in physics, he would go climb in a table and then jump, jump from the table to the floor to show how gravity works because, of course, he falls from the table. <laughs> <laughs> and the children are always uh, very uh, amused. What was it? Kasi teacher, si teacher uh, nag-jumping around. <laughs> Oo nga po. These are the things that I know our students miss. I have a an, an, an nephew na nagsasabi na kung talagang, pwede ba, kailan na ba kami babalik? And this is a yes. grade four student. No? Gustong gusto yes. na po talaga. It's the nila. children who are really uh, uh, making the demand. I mean, parents, lahat-lahat gusto nila ano, face-to-face. But ang pinaka-loudest voice sa aking sa bingi na tayo ni Lola is uh, <laughs> the child who said, I uh, want to be taught by a teacher. <laughs> that's true. But you're great, uh, Secretary Briones. I, 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 I picked up from you yung napakahirap na pinagdadaanan natin ngayon, hindi lang ng sektor ng edukasyon, pero yung adjusting ng role. And uh, thinking of education going to the home, dati sa classroom nila labanan or nag, uh, dan natin wage yung uh, war for quality education or rather um, campaign for quality education, ngayon nagsatahanan. Siguro po hingian ko lang kayo ng, ng uh, konting um, uh, tip or uh, insight kung paano matutulungan yung mga magulang at yung mga guardians na ngayon ay naging mga uh, teacher nanay na, teacher tatay. <laughs> mga, <laughs> mga actually, actually, some local governments and PTAs, you know, Jaelino Melba, uh, uh, you'll, you'll be surprised uh, in the, the Karaga region. They have this nanay academy. where uh, the nanas uh, go, go to school at uh, uh, tinuturuan sila etc and you also have in Valenzuela uh, nanay schools kasi usually i don't know bakit walang tatay schools i i, I feel i feel a bit and there is unfairness <laughs> we need to research on that <laughs> uh, uh, sa Valenzuela ganun din mayroon silang nanay academy these are organized by PTAs Uh, feel, uh, parent teachers associations na kasi di nanays even I myself pag paturuin ako halimbawa ng apo ko ng mat hindi ko kaya hindi 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 ko kaya dahil iba na yung uh, iba na yung pagturo iba na yung hinahanap uh, etc mm-hmm. tapos may mga nanay na they organize themselves they teach its other yeah Jael right Secretary, talking about nanays na and tatays, no, meron po tayong isang comment galing sa isang kapatid, sabi si Maria Justiniana Tedase. Sabi niya, sa grassroots level po, hirap na hirap ang mga bata sa pag-aaral sa dami ng mga modules na kailangan nilang aralin at sa mga deadlines. Pwede po kaya, napiliin na lang yung mga subjects generally. Uh, kung saan mahihina ang mga batang Pilipino. Halimbawa, reading, comprehension, writing, mathematics, English. Pwede rin idagdag dito yung kasaysayan dahil yung mga kabataan daw natin ngayon ay wala ng sense of history. Pwede ba yon Secretary? Na instead uh, na yung full uh, curriculum, yes, yes. limited, uh, pipiliin lang? Uh, sa totoo lang, <laughs> uh, when, when the uh, senior high school program was initiated, ang requirement you'd have, uh, ang hinahanap ay 15,000 competences to finish uh, senior high school. We reduced that 15,000. We reduced that to 5,000. And we'll probably be reducing them some more. Kasi uh, we got the feedback, and, and, and very loud feedback, of course, na uh, hirap ng ano. And, and children were calling for the academic freeze. Gusto na nila, tigil na lang yung pag-aaral kasi nakakapagod. Although, I, as I, I was saying, nahirapan talaga mag-transition ng mga bata. If for six months hindi ka nag-aaral, subukan mo nga, Jair. na wala kang ginagawa sa buhay mo. 
and then suddenly you have to work, oh. you have to do a lot of things. Then uh, that's true. Then you have the uh, momentum. Just make. Uh, anyway, so uh, we we adhere to what they describe as. Kasi ma, pero this came also from the students themselves, Merba. Yung ah. tao nila academic ease. Ayan, ease. Kami, we, okay. Uh, we we try to work with the students on on academic ease. Tapos tiningnan nga ng amin mga curriculum people. Oo nga so ano pala ma, ma, mabigat talaga sa mga bata na nagta-transition sa mga teachers, sa mga parents. So pa ano uh, we are in the process of reducing Ah, at saka, at saka yung mga deadlines okay. well, 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 at the end of the week submit <laughs> di ba? Yeah. pass your paper <laughs> okay. yeah, I think sa school di ba? the parents will make up the, the modules etc ay pwedeng mag-extend pwedeng right. so secretary week. by next school year parang can we expect na parang less na yung yes, number yes. Mga yes, yes. Yes. ang assumption din naman natin kasi secretary by next school year blended pa rin tayo ano Depende sa bilis na... Uh, yeah, de- depende sa... Uh, it's really health uh, which will determine that. Pero yeah. uh, kami, uh, we, we, we assume that uh, hopefully things will be uh, will be better. Pero uh, inamin naman yan. Yan, yan ang ano nga. Eh, we're really honest. Nung tinanong namin, pinag-aralan ng aming curriculum people, nung inisa-isa nga nila, nakita nila kasi... Iba yung nakaupo ka lang, naisip ko, nag-isip kung anong ipagawa mo sa mga bata, anong ipabasa mo, pero subukan mong gawin. <laughs> Oo. So, yes. uh, yun, nakita nila. At saka may feedback ang mga bata talaga. Uh, sinasabi okay. nila, hirap na sila. Oo. Ayun. So, matutuwa si Maria Justinia, Justiniana de Gase sa feedback na yan from you. Yes, yes, yes. Oo. We, we, we listen uh, as much as, as we can. Oo. That's wonderful. Yes, mm-hmm. Speaking of listening, at may tanong po dito si Joseph Ramiscal. Magandang gabi po, Mr. Ramiscal. Tanong po niya ay, maibabalik po kaya ang Philippine History subject sa high school? Yung hindi na integrated na lang ito sa ibang subjects ng araling panlipunan. What's your comment on this po, Secretary? Uh, gusto ko na ano, reviewin ito. This is where, as I said, yung curriculum review will, yeah. will be very... Uh, will be very uh, uh, important. Kasi ito, na, I will not say nabutan, uh, nandoon na ngayon yun, that's how the curriculum is now uh, structured. Pero uh, sinasabi ko nga, kailangan reviewin yan in terms of, 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 of relevance uh, to, to us as Filipinos dahil uh, we should never forget kasi magiging yes. report na lang tayo, magiging teki tayo kung uh, uh, yun lang ang uh, uh, i-focus natin. Pero ang history natin as a people, uh, kailangan din alam ng mga bata. So y- yung curriculum review, yun ang pinaka, uh, pinaka-challenging na uh, task ng yeah. of education. Kasi pagdating ano na... Ano yung timeline ba? Na, 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 ha? Yung, yung timeline. Sorry po. Sorry. Ano, ano po yung timeline noon? Para before... Uh, The administration ginagawa, ginagawa na yan ngayon ng ano, curriculum uh, group natin. Especially since we are receiving, of course, uh, 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 a lot of feedback from uh, yeah. students, from uh, uh, experts, and also the matter of language. Uh, by yes. the way, Melba, we're going to hold a, a national conference on, on language. Kasi... Uh, isa din yung napaka-sensitive na topic dahil on the one hand, galit na galit tayo, anong ginagawa ng DepEd, hindi marunong mag-English ang mga bata, hindi marunong mag-spell, o, o hindi marunong ng math, hindi marunong social sciences, anang, nang, ano, nang, uh, whatever, ang mga bata. But at the same time, uh, we have to bear in mind, they learn English only in grade 4. So, uh, magiging uh, uh, I'm sure that will be very sensitive and uh, uh, quite uh, uh, vigorous uh, debate. Kaya gusto namin we, we get together all the pros and the cons, the defenders as well as those who want any change. Kasi alam mo, pero mo isang, uh, isang local government official natin, isang governor, really threatened to stop 
assistance to the department, yung tawag nating SEF, if the books will not be changed from uh, uh, the mother tongue to English. Mm. Lahat ng textbooks gusto niya in English because she, she wants the, the learners in her province to uh, to improve their English and to do well in math and in science. So sabi niya, hindi ako magbibigay kung sinong school dyan na uh, gagamit ng textbooks, materials in English, yun lang tutulungan nila, which of course uh, is highly uh, 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 sensitive. So uh, language is going to be an area. There are many areas na where Christian groups can participate in because they know about education. Because after all, education starts with the church. Yeah. The earliest educational institution. Yeah. True. A church. Yeah. Uh, church schools. Diba? Yes. Uh, in, in your case, a catechism. As sa amin naman, mga Sunday school. Ang, ang, ang knowledge and the greatest uh, educational institutions are uh, are uh, uh, belong to various faiths. Diba? Indeed. Indeed. Babalikan natin yan as we wind down in a bit, no, Secretary? Uh, maraming magagandang feedback yung mga kapatid natin. Uh, sabi halimbawa ni Rene Lozada, kanina nagsalita na rin siya, mabuhay po kayo Professor Liling, sobrang galing as ever, dynamic, um, and intellectual finesse. O diba for an 80-year-old, intellectual <laughs> finesse. Um, ano to? Oh, oh, oh. Spell Pero finesse. Ma- <laughs> Ayan no, na. Tweet <laughs> na to, Kuya Jayil. Go! <laughs> Pero may maganda pong mga ano to. Um, I mean, nakikita natin, I mean, I think yung mga kapatid natin, ano, uh, they're sharing yung experiences nila. May nakikita tayong comments about problema ng mga nanay, napapagod sila, hindi na sila makapagpahinga, uh, or yes. may mga mga issues sa modules and the deaf ed channel. And, and usually, uh, ang nanay at ang bata, ang parehas silang nahihirapan. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. Opo, yung double burden ng babae. <laughs> But uh, exactly, oh, exactly. feedback nang gagaling oh. sa mga nanay. <laughs> exactly, yung double burden na pinag-aaralan natin sa gender studies noon, ngayon triple burden na for the woman, I feel. No? Mm-hmm. Um, so, ito po, may, may, just as we wind down, meron pong tanong si Randolph Canio. There are many issues on modules and DepEd channel ito ba ay malinaw na hindi talaga nasala ang mga taong naka-assign para gawin ang mga iyon? Kasi ma'am, no ba? Parang may mga nakikita na para bakit uh-huh. meron many information ganun. Can you comment on that, ma'am? Uh, una, hindi lahat ng mga modules na pakalat-kalat, paikot-ikot, na binibenta ay galing sa DepEd. Right. Uh, karamihan yung uh, halimbawa yung talagang absolutely stupid and ridiculous hindi naman gawa ng DepEd yon mm-hmm. Pero binibenta. Mm-hmm. At saka uh, you will recall na mayroong isang module na uh, medyo bastos. No? Uh, nakapang, napakapangit ng language. Ay sabi nga ni Joel, sinalins siya ni Senator San Escudero. Basahin mo nga yan, uh, Senator Joel. Sabi naman ni Senator Joel, hindi daw niya kayang basahin. <laughs> oh, hindi daw niya kayang basahin orally. Uh, y- yun. Uh, hindi yun galing sa DepEd. It was written by a 21-year-old uh, young person na hindi naman niya yun field, yung subject na yan. Right. So we had it investigated. In two hours time, na-track namin kaagad. Hindi naman ganon ka Jurassic ang DepEd. Mabilis mag-track ng mga ganon. Uh, um, halimbawa, yung uh, mga... Uh, mga claims na mali-mali, mga pintado, mali talaga yon Hindi naman yun, ano. Uh, tapos, mayroon kami tinatawag, Jael, na error watch na program. What, what does that mean? Find, kung mag, those who find errors, report it to us, uh, to this ah. error watch. Ito namang error watch, tinatrack kung saan ang gagaling. So, malalaman namin, amin ba yon O oh, it is... Uh, from somewhere okay. else. Oo. Tapos binibenta sa ano uh, sa mga uh, uh, mga bata o sa mga parents kagaya nung as I said nangyari doon sa sinasabi nilang yeah. basta na, na na module at saka yung mga maling information na kitang kita naman talagang obvious na obvious na mali naman talaga. Oo. Oo. <laughs> 
pero lumalabas kasi oh, ano. Kasi sabihin mo gawa yan ng gawa yan ng uh, uh, DepEd at saka yung discrimination also. Oh, yung discrimination halimbawa yung uh, mga various tribes uh, ano pa uh, ilang buwan na yan kasi may review process kasi pag halimbawa may gagawing module may review process yung tinatawag nating quality control na reject yun that's na right yun. Oh, oh. and then one one teacher uh, for whatever reason proceeded with it in one school for her class but it was not uh, circulated nationally tapos inano ka agad tapos syempre uh, sinisi na naman ang ang uh, depend because talagang bawal naman yung ano uh, uh, that, that, that's not only <laughs> ignorant but also very stupid to describe people in 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 in, in, in that manner no oo so um may merong ganong instances hindi lahat sa amin pero pag amin na amin namin sinasabi namin yung teacher ito, ito. isa isang teacher ginawa niya para sa klase niya but not for national and vinidro ka agad dahil ma- nakikita naman ka agad eh uh, because of our system of ano yung error watch at saka yung quality control na bago ipasa ang isang module, eh, rin-review yan. Ah. Totoo, totoo. Yeah. Saka ako, ako rin, ma'am, no, as experience ko, I've, uh, I wrote a um, textbook on world religions for senior high school. Um, mm. Of course, pinaghirapan namin yun. Ano, of course. Kasi kami ay mga experts doon. Pero alam niyo, ma'am, yung... Pa. <laughs> ayaw po, pinabasbasan ko pa. So, pero, pero alam niyo po, yung, yung, yung process kasi ng publishing eh, yun, labas na yun sa DepEd, pero yung proseso ng publishing, parang ora-orada, dapat meron ka na masulat na libro. Um, we resisted that kasi alam namin na magsasuffer yung quality. Eh. And uh, uh, it's really part of the whole education system. Ma'am, magra-wrap up na tayo. May tanong kami ni Marie. Oo, sayang. Pat, uh, church. Enjoy pa ako. Nag-easing na ako. Nag-enjoy pa ako. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is really a good yeah. one, Mary. Mary. Yeah. Um. Well, two questions po. Ma- may may meron din ako tanong sa Mary later. Uh-oh. I think. Ano ko? Parang kinabahan ako at yun na ako. Hindi ka naman ay na eksamen. Sige pa, sige pa. It's Pero, about what you do. Uh, okay. Sige. Yes po. Sige po. So two questions. Um. To wrap this up, because dito sa Isaac we really practice radical hope. Magaling na ang mundo sa negativism. Tama po kayo, no? They velcro on the negative and yung good, parang nagteteflon lang, no? It slides. So, what are the good things that are not mentioned in the news? The, the good things in our education system, para naman yung ating mga viewers will uh, will have something to hold on to it with hope. And then, pangalawa po, how can we help? How can the private sector help? Tanong din yan ng ating mga viewers. Um, I believe it's a JC and and uh anis anipse jc anipse how can the private sector help uh how can us the stakeholders help so hope and help po uh secretary briones uh, what are the good things one good thing is that we recognize we don't have all the answers mm-hmm. because education is a national uh, concern so we are uh, trying endeavoring to rope in all who have uh, uh, particular views or expertise in education and asking their uh, uh, their their help kaya ngayon sa kite yung e is engaging the stakeholders so uh, that's one good thing and it, it's very aggressive program headed by my uh, under secretary uh, the good thing is, as I said, we are not focusing in quality talaga, quality uh, uh, education. And another good thing, uh, which I strongly uh, know, advocate, is really have to look at the curriculum. I said that when I first assumed, the minute I sat down, sabi namin curriculum review, but uh, probably have to speed up things in the light of uh, feedback that we are, that, that we are getting no from uh, from the public no the engagement of all those who believe in education many new things the good thing uh, another good thing or at least uh, 
kami dalawa ni Melba, mga ano na kami, mga senyora, mga donya. <laughs> Pero kayo dalawa, mga baby pa kayo. Oo. Uh, we have, uh, I, I have created, initiated the formation of a futures group in education. Now we are trying to discern what education is going to be like not after the election or 2022 lang, that's one year lang. But uh, in, in the near or far future, kasi uh, right now we're talking about lifespans of 100 years, di ba? At, at the very least, 100 years. Uh, um, and um, ang role ng technology, uh, artificial intelligence, all of these things impact on education, but how do you retain your uh, our being human? Oh, we might be different 50 years from now. Iba yung mata natin ng ating buhok, lahat-lahat. So I have this, uh, I organized this futures group, which is supported by Senator Pia. And uh, uh, I think we are only one of two agencies in government na looking at the future beyond uh, elections. Mm -hmm. uh, what education will be like to see the yeah. demand, the pressure for technology is going to be uh, very, very powerful. But how do we uh, uh, prepare our, our, our children, our learners for that? Sabi nga Melba, nang, ah, hindi ko malimot-limutan ang president ng Peru. Sa isang meeting ng ministers of education, sabi niya, by the time your learners graduate, everything that you have taught them will have become irrelevant. Mm -hmm. See, the thing is not to teach, not so much to teach data. Because you get your data from your computer, tuldok, tuldok mo lang. Eh, ngayon, eh, uh, you are asked one plus one, magkano, magkukomputer ka pa, maglalaptop ka pa, how much is one plus one? Eh, uh, we, we do that men, those things mentally before. Uh, yung mga data, mga information, we, we overload our children with data, etc., which we can get uh, elsewhere. Yes. The, the important thing is the capacity for critical thinking yes. and to analyze and to work with other people, to communicate. Kasi walang, walang choice ang mga bata ngayon. They have to be working with each other. So th that's what... Uh, I'm, I'm very much uh, interested in. Kaya ang joke ko nga sa mga tao ko, I'm the oldest in the department, but I have the youngest ideas. Because well, I'm thinking 100 years, 50 years. Yeah, right, Michelle. What education, uh, how do you prepare uh, our, our learners already? Na, na, alam, oh, oh. Next year's elections. <laughs> Uh, alam, alam nyo ma'am, ano to eh, I'm, I'm also part of the, uh, meron kami tinatawag na force sighting sa, uh, sa National Academy of Science and Technology. So I'm part of the, uh, uh, Ay, one of the okay. writers. Oh, gusto namin yan. Uh, yeah, so, so ako mismo Why pinasok ko yung education oh, doon. Look at education as a 2050 sector. eh. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Ma'am, may tanong lang pahabol si Randolph Tanyo. He's a college student, I think. Um, Pa, kamusta po yung budget? Yung, yung pagtulong daw sa mga public school teachers para daw masuportahan yung kanilang uh, internet. Uh, is, it, is, is DepEd managing those those things? Um, actually, actually hmm. it's the, um, may malaking interest diyan ang mga local governments. Uh, I see. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Kasi uh, it is also to their benefit eh. And they're very like like PASIC, for example. Grabe ang ano ang ano ng 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 PASIC sa science and math, or or like Baguio. Uh, it should not be a surprise to us. Why is it that the kids in Baguio speak English and write in English? So one time when one, one politician was wondering na umabot kami ng kalinga. Why when the children there spoke English? Oh, isabi ko you have to go yes. back to history. Back. Yeah. <laughs> kung bakit marunong mag-English yung mga, mga bata doon uh, so um, we're, we're interested in, in, in those uh, uh, issues uh, yun ang gusto naming ma makita para uh, hindi lang pag-iisipan natin kung uh, uh, hanggang 6 years o oh, nagbibilang kasi na countdown na kasi kami eh, countdown mode o oh, how many hundred days na lang o how many thousand days uh, wala nang thousand days, ilang days na lang? 
oh, mga 800 something days na lang matira sa term. We are, we are not thinking in these terms. Uh, it's in terms of legacy. Another concern, ito, linya talaga ng mga Christian groups, is, is uh, the alternative learning systems. Mm -hmm. Because the Christians started it all. Di ba? Yes. Mas, mas maaga naman ang mga, mga Christians. Wala naman silang internet. Ang ginagamit noong panahon ay radyo. Oo. Tsaka yung mga schools, schools of the air, uh, etc. Et uh, so, um, for me, uh, very important legacy ito in future study, yung alternative learning systems, uh, which we want to, uh, to really uh, expand and where we want to make use of the experience of those who are already engaged in it. The hell, uh, ang mga faith-based organizations, sanay na sanay dyan na mag-handle mag ng uh, uh, um, mga learners na ganyan because these are Many of them would be adults, di ba? Oo, na, uh, who, who need to survive in life uh, with, uh, with a little bit of ano naman, learning and a little bit of uh, you know, uh, handling uh, many of the things that they have to do. So yun, yung alternative learning systems, yung future studies, which I think would be uh, 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 new innovations. And then the curriculum, which... Uh, and of course, the integration also of, of the humanities uh, into uh, technology. Uh -oh. That's right. You That's cannot right. separate the, the, the two, no, na technology by itself. Um, and kaya uh, interesado ako. Are you a member of NAST ba? Are you in NAST? Ako po ay, no, outstanding young scientist po. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 oh, so, yeah. Why, so, we oh, have that. Yeah. So oh, yes, oh, oh. But yeah. there are more boys na 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 awarded yan. <laughs> oh, okay, so girls. Uh, well, well, there are more white oh, <laughs> <five> boys than. <laughs> you have to complain ko kanina because we're yeah. celebrating in UNESCO the International Year of Women and yeah. Girls in Science. <laughs> and I cited the numbers in your, your OSY. Na, Kunti uh, lang ang girls. Oh. Tapos sa national scientist, more than 70 ang ano eh, 11 lang ang women na scientists. So uh, that, that is something we, we should also uh, look at. But in future, right. ayan, uh, uh, we're, we're really into it. And of course, a uh, final is, uh, hindi natin kalimutan si see good manners and right conduct about being human. That, uh, yan ang, ano, uh, uh, which will differentiate us from, from the other species and, and differentiate us from the robots and from AIs, the artificial intelligence. Uh, we have to be different, of course. And we have advantages as humans. Uh, ayun. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Okay, Marie, may tanong na ako. I'm interested in what you do. Kasi you're into, uh, into uh, issues on sexual exploitation of children. That's right. Oh. Yeah. yeah. yeah oh. oh, I did my homework on all of you. Oh. <laughs> no. Ayan pala. Nagulat ako. Tama po kayo. That's right. That's right. Against uh -oh. all... Okay. And that is a very serious challenge for us. Lalo na yung time na walang classes. That's true. Yeah. To match yes. next spike. Yeah. Yes, there's escalation. Ang and, 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 and we need, you know, we, we, we need uh, uh, help. We need, uh, we need to have a better reporting system. Kasi pag malaman namin, we really do something about it. Pero, uh, uh, ayun, uh, if, if we can never be forgiven if, if we abuse our children. That would be the gravest <laughs> sin. <laughs> that we, we, we can uh, commit and nakita ko that you are into that sabi ko, Aba, 
i tale namin like, uh, ang, ang group mo for for ay, this yeah. lilinawin ko lang po ah. ako po ay lumalaban against it baka kala nila ako yung nagpapasilitate iti po <laughs> we did the research i led the study yeah, i know i know oo listahan yeah, mo mga research ng... mo ito din ako. haba ng listahan ni eh, eh, research research niya eh mga sampung pahina po yan oo oh, <laughs> no all right <laughs> it's time for uh, ate melba to wrap this up. Yes. Ate Melba, how do you wrap this up? Hindi <laughs> hindi pwedeng uh, i-wrap kasi ano lang, post ate, lang. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Alam mo naman si Ate Liling, mahirap i-put together yung kanyang maraming mga sinabi sa atin. But siguro just to uh, a few points na merong resonance sa akin personally, ano? Una-una yung sinasabi ni Ate Liling about putting a great deal of attention sa upskilling ng mga teachers. Kasi I think yung movement towards technology, towards uh, more technical subjects, all of this. Ano yun, yung drift na yan actually is a sign na we are losing yung human, uh, human attach ng mga teachers. And I'm very glad na si Ate Liling wants to go back dun sa mga sa idea ng social sciences, ng mga humanities, and so on. At saka being human, you know, because we are Christians. Ang, ang feeling ko dyan is, uh, I think we need to think carefully, uh, lalo yung mga educators at mga policy makers natin, na hindi necessarily importante yung you go on the train nitong so-called technological modernization. Kasi uh, ang, ang mga Pilipino actually, in many ways, scientifically, ay may mga talents that can make us, you know, easily float sa global ano eh, environment. Halimbawa, yung fact na tayo ay very intuitive at imaginative. Uh, That's our advantage over robots. Opo, over robots. My, I, culturally, ganyan tayo. Kahit yung mga Amerikano na no, mga missionary, I, I was think, looking at the archives. Sabi nila, mga Pilipino to, they have a lot of fun. And yet, very imaginative sila at intuitive. Now, sa totoo lang, in this age, no, yung age ng me- mechanical industrialization, tapos ngayon eh. Tapos na sa digital age na tayo. And I think if you notice, ang pinaka ma- 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 mahalaga na faculty these days is imagination. Yung mga inumpisahan nila, Lu- Lu- you know, George Lucas, sila itong mga, yung mahul- mausay sa mga gadget. Uh, at the end of the day, if you look at yung kanilang mga ano, it's really imagining the future. Kaya, Masaya ako na, for instance, si Ate Liling is uh, organizing uh, a kind of futures na thinking ano, sa state ng ating education. Kasi ang napaka-importante these days actually is imagination. Uh, at kahit naman noon, halimbawa, for instance, may mga narratives dun sa papano na-discover ni Einstein yung theory of relativity. Inimagine lang niya, he was sitting in the custom house. Inimagine niya, what will it be like kung itong train na ito is uh, uh, <clears throat> going at the same rate, no? kung tatakbo ka, same rate ng ano, is this going to be uh, ano, parallel? Ganun-ganun. So, dyan siya nag-isip ng kanyang theory of relativity. Imagination eh. Mm-hmm. And I think we need to see na yung imagination at saka technical and scientific capacity. Magkasama yun. Uh, ang, ang best inventions sa human history have always put those things together. Yung imagination at saka yung uh, inventiveness and creativity. And marami tayong ganon. Ang Filipino, very creative. Kung akong tatanungin ninyo. And I have lots of stories tungkol dyan na actually sabi nila habang yung anime, nag-umpisa raw yan sa mga, mga illustrators natin. Ang mga, mga illustrators natin. Yung mga, hindi lang kasi tayo sa tutulang problema, self-image. Kaya tama yung, yung if we go back dun sa issues ng identity, values, 
good manners and right conduct and all of these things. If we go back to those, mga life skills, along with, of course, being, you know, cognizant sa mga technical, sa no? Pero I think those are things that we already have in the culture. So, meron kang, yung mga, meron sabi nga, yung kailangan mo yung mga kultura na merong plasticity ngayon, no? Hindi yung rigid. Dahil yung okay yun sa modernization at industrialization. Ngayon, hindi, hindi pwede, hindi ka makaka, masyadong mabilis yung ano. Kung hindi ka imaginative, hindi ka creative, you will not survive. Correct. Pero tayo culturally, ganun na tayo eh. Uh, so, ang feeling ko parang we, we are trying once again to imitate yung unilinear development ng West. Na talagang hindi ka na makakaabot dyan. Ang kailangan, meron tayong sarili based on our cultural gifts, yung mga binigay ng Diyos na sa atin. Uh, and pagyamanin nito and enhance ito. At hindi man kailangan lahat alam natin, sabi nga ni Ate yes. Lili, lahat kailangan alam. Kasi kailangan natin tayong niche globally, no? Kahit sa mga sa mga bata natin, kaya alam nila exact, exactly ano yung giftedness nila. Doon sila mag-focus. Ngayon, I think one of the things I have really thought about, yung sinasabi ni Jesus na we should not bother about too many things. Nalala niyo sabi niya kay, kay Martha. Sabi niya, you, you fret and, and are, you're anxious about many things. Sabi niya, only one thing is needful. Now, yung one thing needful na yun, importante yun eh, for all of us as, as individuals as well as churches and as nations. Uh, ang, sa totoo lang, ang trajectory ng development ng mga nations have always been according to their gifting and natural resources. Yung mga Swiss, halimbawa, wala silang masyadong uh, arable na land, no? Panay mga bato. So, what do they do? Meron silang ang all that they can do is have sheep, no? Tapos meron silang, tapos very precise sila sa, no? So they have watch, uh, watch making as a major, ano? Tapos yung kanilang dairy and everything, no? Kasi wala naman tutubo rin sa kanila. So, in other words, yung resource base. Nalala ko si, si Dr. Habito was saying na bakit hindi tayo nag-isip ng sea-based na economy? We have a very long coastline. At tayo, historically, we've always been seafarers. Pero hindi natin in-explore yun. Hindi natin in-enhance what we already have no? as, as a people. So isa yung problema na yun, yung we need to think carefully. What really makes for the enhancement of our country so that we really progress and build our own niche no? as a people? So importante yun. Tangalo, siguro yung yung issue ng uh, use of technology ng, na hindi natin to ginagamit for, sa totoo lang, sabi nga, kahit na mo, you have 100 what, 55 million cellphones, sabi ni Ate Liling, karamihan dyan, ginagamit for entertainment and, yes, and entertainment. Uh, socializing. You know, bago matulog, oh, the Lord bless you, mga ganyan, maraming mga ganun. Ano. Sabi ko, sayang yung pera na ginagamit doon. But you see, ang Pilipino does not use technology in the same way as others. Yung others, yes. for information yun eh. So, uh, pero tayo, uh, masaya tayo sa gadgets because we socialize. We are able to connect. We are able to entertain. Ganon. So, we have yet to think about enhancing yung use ng, ng ating multimedia technology in such a way na tumataas yung antas ng critical thinking. Ang, prob ang problema itong social media, ang tendency ngayon is what? Yung to simplify everything, you know, maging simplistic. Uh, at at uh, pinakikinggan mo lang din yung iyong side. So, tapos everybody else is demonized. I, so it does not make for critical thinking. It doesn't make for, for, ano, no? for uh, useful na use ng technology. So siguro yun ang isang dapat pag-isipan natin, especially within the Christian community. How do we teach our people to use technology so that we enhance yung ating pagtatao, yung ating humanness? 
and we don't go the way of uh, fake news, no? But the way of truth telling. So, sa isang ano yon na siguro trabaho ng churches ito. Now we go against the tide of uh, yung degradation ng communication natin styles and so on and the use of words, no? Uh, siguro yung issue din ng ng language. Um, <laughs> siguro po ano uh, at Liling, I think uh, from the Isaac side, we would be happy to be part of that conversation. Kasi po. Yes. Uh, okay. Kasi, kasi po nung ginawa yung yung tanggalin yung ano hanggang grade 4 lang hindi nag-iisip na we are actually a global world in other words uh, ano na multicultural na po talaga eh. so and it's not a disadvantage kung tayo ay multilingual at multilingual naman talaga ang Pilipino eh ano yes, yes. a trilingual meron tayong Meron tayong ating uh, native na dialect, meron tayong Pilipino, meron tayong English. I mean, kung para po ninyo yung pagka-trilingual natin, do sa mga Amerikano, Amerikano, monolingual lang eh. Ano bang alam nila? Oh, yung English. That's why they teach us English rather than learning Tagalog nung dumating yung mga misyonaryo. So, in other words, yung yung siguro yung issue ng language, uh, on the one hand, uh, we have to recognize yung sinasabi ng mga ling linguistic scholars na it shapes us, it shapes our worldview, and it shapes our souls. Ano yung lingwahe mo talaga, yung native na ano mo? Ano yung language of the heart, yung language of the soul? Uh, dapat pagyamayan yun. Pero at the same time, huwag din nating i-constrain ang mga tao in such a way na wala silang exposure in what it means to be a multicultural and multilingual na ano person who needs to survive in that kind of environment so hindi po sa tingin ko yun either or eh. maraming mga bagay na kailangan pag-isipan because we have a very different global context uh, ngayon po Siguro ren magandang ipag ipagdasal natin yung mga kagaya ni Ate Liling. Ito ay para sa ating mga kapatid no na nanonood ngayon. Uh, usually ang pinapagpray natin yun lang mga missionaries going eh no uh, sa sa kunsan saan. But we do not pray for public servants na kagaya ni Ate Liling. Sapagkat uh, si Ate Liling nag-umpisa na Pagkakao daw ay nasa gobyerno, you need to be prepared for suffering. And that's true. It is suffering. Opo. It's the suffering. Yeah, and, and hindi naman masyado malaking sweldo ng mga public servants. At the same time, you have to deal with enormous corruption and how to change the system and everything. Hindi natin pinagdadasal yung mga kagaya ni Ate Lilin. Yung mga pastor, we, we don't commission yung mga kapatid natin who are actually in alliance din pag sila ay pumasok sa gobyerno. Kaya maraming tao ayaw pumasok sa gobyerno. So I think it's it's good for us to to start yung mga yung mga pastor ano to start thinking na we we commission as well as pray for for protection sa mga public servants na kagaya ni Ate Lily. Uh, at hindi lang po yung mga pinapagpray natin ay yung mga, pa, mga missionary natin. So ito po yung ating ano siguro and we would like to thank si Ate Liling for being with us. Ate Liling baka po ito ay panimula lang. We, we might have yes, to invite Yes, yes, yes. Oo kasi I'm enjoying it. Eh. <laughs> uh, so ngayon po ay mag, uh, papagdasal po namin kayo na natulungan kayo ng ating Panginoon sa sa uh, this this uh, next year or so na kayo po ay nakaupo pa rin diyan sa DepEd. So Marie and Jayil, you would you like to say something before we pray? Uh, gusto ko pong um, magpasalamat uh, sa inyo, Secretary Briones, kami ni Kuya Jayil. It allows uh, this episode allowed us to uh, get to know you and also see your heart sa mga nangyayari sa ating uh, mga kabataan. 
siguro magandang paalala lang din sa ating mga viewers na uh, to always keep kindness. Kasi yan ang totoong uh, batayan ng pagiging edukado natin, hindi ba? Kaya pati sa pag-deal natin sa ating mga criticisms, <laughs> siguro lagyan natin ng uh, kindness, no? pati sa gobyerno. Uh, and also, um, Thank you for uh, the things that you've said na pwede namin paghugutan ng hope yung uh, future study na yan at yung uh, uh, ALS where the church can help. Siguro it's uh, truly high time na lakasan pa ng simbahan ang pagtulong, uh, pagbigay uh, ng aming bisig sa DepEd. Hindi ba Kuya Jail? I pass the floor na to Kuya Jail. Kuya Jail. Yeah, ako, ako naman personally, um, nakakita ko yung Uh, challenges pagdating sa pagperform ng ating curriculum. We're talking about a. Uh, it's not easy, right, to come up with a standard curriculum for everyone. Tapos every time you come up with one, automatic may criticism yon. And so I I hope um, that the review that your that the Department of Education is um, undergoing right now uh, for our curriculum will be really to our benefit. And ako I'd like to echo what our uh, audience has brought up, namely yung kahalagahan ng history. Isa kasi yung talaga secretary, no? yung sa mga paulit-ulit na lumalabas sa mga conversations natin dito. Even dito po sa Isip Isak, even in the previous um, episodes, we have um, we have um, uh, we have people who are concerned about you what you you know what we might consider historical revisionism mm-hmm. celebrating authoritarianism mm-hmm. uh, those things dahil marami sa mga kabataan natin hindi na aware doon sa mga nangyari in the past so we pray that that curriculum review will be very successful not for us but for the future thank you thank you salamat okay. uh, ma'am we would like to invite you after this show to to have uh, some discussion with us about some things na maaari po natin siguro itulong sa, sa DepEd sa panahon. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, we will pray for you na po. Let's pray. Salsayo. Panginoon kami po ay nagpapasalamat na meron pong mga public servants kagaya ni Ate Lili. Tulungan po ninyo siya na hindi mag-survive but to thrive sa panahon Lord that is left to her. Iadalain po namin na yung mga initiatives that she has in her heart will really come to pass. And we pray that you may continue to protect her from many unfair criticisms. Mm-hmm. Iadalain po namin na you will surround her with your love, with your protection, with all the things that she needs to be able to function as a public servant before you. Iadalain po namin din ang lahat ng mga decisions that they have to do for the future. We especially bring to you yung mga initiatives that you would like to put in place and put into motion. Lord, we do pray especially that you may give her health, make her strong continually. Iadalain po namin na patuloy po siya to be truly a light that is in a very dark place. So, we ask now that you may especially anoint her and especially give her all the wisdom that she will need to continue her work. And Lord, we ask now together with our audience, with Jail and Marie and all who are part of this Isipisa, we pray that we may also be faithful to the calling that you have given to us. So we pray this together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Yeah. It was a wonderful session. Uh, it was, it was, it was. Thank you so much, Secretary. Uh, I hope you can hear me.